Earlier lesson 15, we looked at emotion regulation and reputation. Now I'm fully aware in the eighth grade, your reputation is very important to you and it's going to continue to be as you enter into high school. But let me give you a perspective as the old guy. Your reputation is going to follow you as you age and it very well may change as you age. Okay, so a little food for thought as we get started. And we're starting off with two fairly challenging terms. I know your teacher has given you the worksheet. Here's your chance to fill it in. And the first idea is called a looking glass self, which is the process by which people evaluate themselves based on how others see them. I'll give you a quick analogy. If you ever looked at a fish in a fishbowl, you're on the outside looking in, and then you evaluate the fish. Go, oh, what a pretty orange fish, or what a really big fish, or really ugly fish. I don't care. However you want to see the fish. Now, the world sees us like a fish in a fishbowl. And based upon people's evaluations, it can change how we see ourselves. Okay, so that's what a looking glass self is. And the other idea for you is a generalized other, which is an individual's understanding of a society's expectations. You may create a generalized other to understand how people who belong to certain groups may behave. Let me try to simplify that for you. When you go to a particular group, you see what the norms and expectations are, and some people follow that very well, pick up on it very quickly, and other people, it's a struggle, and it can change, and groups can have different expectations. If you choose to be in the theater and play the clarinet, that's different than somebody who goes to high school and devotes themselves to baseball. Baseball team and the theater very well may have very different expectations, different generalized to other, okay? So that was a bit of a challenge. This is a bit easier. You're going to be given a Google form, a survey, and it's going to ask you to strongly agree, agree, neutral, disagree, strongly disagree. Okay, just looking for your opinion, looking for, you know, the class's opinion. And here are the four statements that you are going to either agree, disagree, be neutral about. Number one, I care about what others think about me. Okay, number two, my reputation influences my life and my relationships with others. Number three, reputation is not important to succeed in life. And number four, how I regulate my emotion influences the way that others view me. So answer those questions. Your teacher will present it out, talk about it a bit, and hopefully it's a bit revealing. Okay. I promise. These are the last two heavy concepts. So once you're done with that Google form, I'm going to ask you to look at these two um, definitions and fill that out on your sheet. Okay, so now the first idea is a labeling theory. Now, a labeling theory is the belief that self-identity and behavior may be determined or influenced by terms used to classify and describe people. Now, oftentimes you hear this as clicks, and I know the wording changes and the slang changes, but the ideas don't really change. You know, you know, the athletes and the artist and the theater kids and the smart kids and the class clowns, whatever modern word is used, labels happen. People put labels on each other. Now, here's the thing. If the label is reinforced enough, that becomes something called a self-fulfilling prophecy, which is the belief that people act based on the expectations put on them. Often these expectations are based on your reputation or your label. And it takes the form of things like, you can't join BPA, you're a football player, or you know, you can't uh, do that because you're this or you're that. And what happens is that when people put expectations upon you, you act the part. And oftentimes you may have seen this in a classroom where a teacher may say, wow, I really think you're on the, the brink of doing something great. You're right on the edge of getting better and the person gets better. Or it can be a negative thing, like, you're never going to learn this stuff. You're too stupid to learn this stuff. And then the switch goes off, and lo and behold, the person with the positive does better, and the person with the negative prophecy does worse. Well, you have to ask yourself, was that a self-fulfilling prophecy? Okay, so these are four big terms, but important terms. Now, I don't want to pick on your classmates, but it's okay to pick on us teachers, okay? So let's take these ideas that hopefully you've learned and apply it to teachers. So think about the reputations your teachers have. Now, how could you label them? Now, do these teachers act based on their reputations? So if the teacher gets the label, oh, that's the fun teacher, and everybody goes, oh, yeah, such and such, you're the fun class, and the teacher hears that enough, do they turn it into fun class or the reverse? Oh, that's the really strict teacher, and every oh, be careful of that class, they're really strict. Do the teachers act according to that, okay? So, you know, there's kind of a free flow here, but, but the point is your teachers, 
and everybody out there have made the same choices that you're going to have to make. They have to attempt to create their best self, their authentic self, and present their values that result in their reputation. OK, so they all had a choice to be what they wanted to do. They present their values and their values result in reputation. So hopefully you see that. So we're going to wrap up with looking at this, your ideal self versus what you don't want to be. Now, this is simple. The last four heavy terms, they are not simple. This is fairly easy. Your best self. How would you like to be perceived by the world? If you had to have the world describe you, what would you want them to say? OK, and then your less than best self. How would you not want to be perceived by the world? We all have certain things. So something that you value a lot versus something you don't. I'll give you a quick personal example. I value work ethic. That is hugely important to me. I would never want to be perceived as the lazy person. Okay, that's what I consider my best self. Now, yours might be something quite different, but that's okay. And the point of this is if you really focus in on your ideal best self, and you focus on that, maybe you can achieve it. That's the hope. That's the goal. Okay. And journal entry 15, create a list of your five best reputational self qualities, meaning the five best things about you, the things that improve your reputation. Now, how do you hope others see them? Okay. Do you hope others see these things? Do you feel that others do see the way you see yourself or is there a disconnect okay a little bit of a personal thing these responses don't have to be shared publicly unless you want to i get this is very personal but again to wrap up your reputation does affect your life and when you're looking at your values and attempting to create your best self don't be surprised that in the process your reputation improves because you're being more in touch with your authentic self so thank you for watching